what it seems to me the the again let's just go back the principal author of these changes is gordon brown brown is responsible for the worst features of the old the old new labor settlement um in other words what he's intending to do with the new new labor settlement is to entrench and make irreversible the changes uh, of the 1990s and the early 2000s um in other words, effectively to eradicate our traditions of parliamentary government. That is what it really amounts to. Um, and above all, to uh, lead to... Um, uh, there's something very bizarre about it, because what you do is you multiply political authorities at exactly the moment that politics is failing. Um, you dig yourself, and Gordon Brown was always the kind of man whose reaction to a hole was to dig deeper, dig harder, and to swear when he couldn't dig fast enough. And I, I'm afraid that the, 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 the new proposals are simply guaranteed to make our existing mess much, much worse. But you see, if I were you, um, I would try to broaden what you're doing out. Um, it seems to me that what has gone so lethally wrong with Britain is largely the result of the constitutional changes foisted on the country by New Labour. Now, the Tories, after 13, it will be 14 years, cannot escape blame. They clearly have been shockingly complacent, um, in many ways complicit, in what's got in what's happened the so-called uh, one of one of the great problems particularly with cameron and osborne was you will remember they admired blair um uh, michael gobe was at the center of this cult there was the the notion that blair's memoirs were the new machiavelli they were the new prince they were new the new way of how to do government so far far indeed from wishing to reverse they wanted themselves to entrench and we are now again reaping the rewards of a two-party system that isn't a two-party system which is really um uh, tweedledum and tweedledee um uh, uh, um and this, of course, destroys any faith in the political process. People are disenchanted by it because manifestly it doesn't do anything. But then repeatedly, it can't do anything. You, 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 you seek, I mean, look, look, look at area after area. Look at HS2. Look at house building. Look at the channel. Uh, channel immigrants. In every case, you see a, a series of governmental structures fighting themselves. And um, one has only got to look at these to realize that there's a profound malfunction which covers virtually every area of government. Um, what Gordon Brown is doing is proposing to dig down on all of these areas of malfunction. He will simply create more malfunctioning instruments at vastly, vastly greater cost. Why? Why has there been a doubling of the number of highly paid civil servants? Because you're constantly creating new instruments of government. And if you feel that one instrument of government isn't working, you don't reform it, you create another one. And so constantly we have bodies with regulators. So you have statutory bodies controlled by statutory regulators and you know, there's a process of sort of infinite regress and the thing that it most regresses from is any form of parliamentary control i mean really parliament on the whole might as well not exist it, it is it is terrifying that the the mother of parliaments the the country which pioneered the forms of representative government well i suppose maybe it's just like industrialization isn't it we were first in and first out. In theory, I am reluctant about referenda. I mean, I was actually very actively involved, um, along with Matthew Elliott, I'm obviously Matthew in charge of the whole thing, but me making contributory noises in the referendum uh, on, the, uh, on the single transferable vote referendum when there was the idea very much pushed by the liberals in the in the Lib Lab, in in the Libcon <laughs> Lib Lab, Lib coalition um, uh, back in uh, uh, back in the early teens of the century. Um, uh, I was very active in 
resisting calls for the replacement of first past the post, I'm no longer sure it was actually the right thing to do. So, but the reason that I would support a referendum is we use the word emergency far too much. We talk about climate emergencies and whatever. I'm afraid I don't believe in those, and I certainly don't think that the uh, that kind of or you know climate war uh, this 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 kind of mad panic which those kind of words lead to uh, helps very much the complex process of attempted decarbonisation decarbonisation by the way is a fantasy how do we deal with my wooden chair but um the, but but the, the the more material issue is that there is a genuine emergency there is a constitutional emergency. There is a political emergency. These things are manifestly malfunctioning. The proposals, the new Labour, the new, new, the renewed Labour, actually it's just old new Labour proposals of Gordon Brown, will make a bad situation even worse. They will destroy what little faith there is in politics and politicians. And can we just be clear what that means? It means that the basis of consent for government goes. Once the basis for government consent, government by consent goes, of consent to government goes, the very processes of civil life go. Finally, there is only force. Now, this is something that 800 years of our politics fought to avoid sought to avoid, constructed institutions that very effectively prevented. What we have done carelessly, unthinkingly, or in the case of Gordon Brown, overthinking and, dare I say, Scottish malice, is destroying something historically rooted, historically rooted in England and that mattered, and mattered for the world, because it provided a model for the world. So, yes, but with a very heavy heart, um, yes to a referendum. But who would fight it? Who would argue? Who would... You see, there's nothing to defend. This is what is... Or rather, there's a memory to defend.